In Techno 81, I first visited the ESP32 port. Well, I'm looking again now at it in a little bit more detail. I hope you find it useful. To begin with, then, some general points about the serial ports. The, the ESP32 has three, named 0, 1 and 2. Each one of those ports can be assigned to any two GPIO pins. So that's one for transmit, one for receive. Serial zero is reserved for device programming. It's best not to use it. It's much simpler just to use the two free ports of serial one and two. And the pins by convention are called transmit data and receive data. So RX, TXD, RXD. And the thing for success is always cross-connect your devices. So transmit data to receive data, receive data to transmit data. To initialize the serial ports, first of all, you create a serial port instance. So hardware serial sender on port one. That's a logical name sender. So it can be anything you like. It can be apples, pears. Logically, though, you'd use something it made sense so I've called it sender on port one. The actual protocols and the transmit and receive pins are set by a statement called serial port name begin so in this case it's sender dot begin the board rate the protocol which transmit data pin you're using and which receive data pin you're using and there I've put an example on pins 17 and 16. And if you don't put the parameters, then the defaults are used. So there's a very extensive range of speeds and protocols and pins that can be used for the board rate. You can go from 300 board all the way up to 96 to 100 board. For the protocols, is every protocol that I've ever seen exists from 5-bit no parity through all the way through to 8-bit odd parity and two stop bits. So the default would be serial 8-bit no parity one stop bit. So here's two simple examples, a sending example and a receiving example on the sending side. You create the serial hardware serial instance, I've called it unit one on port one. I begin the serial port, unit one begin at 115 200 board. Use serial 8 bit, no parity, one stop bit, the default, and use transmit data pin 17, receive data pin 16. And while the serial port's available, right hello world just keep going round and round and that's as simple as sending gets for reception the same thing but receiving characters and printing characters and because they're two separate units the code is almost identical and here's a slightly novel example where i'm sending and receiving data to the same esp32 so there's the program create the two instances the sender port the receiver port so sender on port one receiver on port two set up the serial port monitor and then set up the sender speed protocol and pins the receiver protocol and pins and then send out hello world the quick bound fox jumps over the lazy dog's back and then receive it and then print it and this works because the ESP32 has a, a buffer in the UART to receive characters in and that's uh, 128 bytes and that works quite well but it just enables you to test your link intramurally within the same ESP32 that can be quite useful so here's another example, the same thing, but this time using some of the stream functions. In this case, I'm using receiver.readString until, 
um, the backslash n is the carriage return so that's another useful augmentation of the of the program and you can peek you can look ahead into the buffer and see what's coming so there's lots of examples you can utilize there and here's yet another example this time using two separate units and uh, the code is identical for each um, this time receiving floating point data so sending floating point data receiving floating point data and again using those stream functions this one is parse float so receive a set of characters and convert them into a floating point and put them into a variable and print them in summary then it's very easy to set up that ESP32 buffer of 128 characters enables you to do easy transmission and reception. The most important thing to remember with any serial system is to always cross connect transmit data to receive data, receive data to transmit data. And if they're separate circuits, remember to put a common ground between them. You can use all of those Arduino stream functions and there I've put an example there. So I hope you found this useful. So yet another insight into the serial. I hope you found this technical note interesting and useful. 